Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kangbar and today we'll be studying progressions lecture 5. So this is the last lecture of progressions and we'll be talking about some questions of AMG again and we'll, we'll end the lecture with a uh, method of reference. So let's begin the lecture with an example. If ABC are some positive numbers such that A plus B plus C equals to 18, then the maximum value of A square B cube plus C4 is equals to. Now, until now we have seen that A plus B plus C is given and we have to find find out the maximum value of ABC. Now, but what is this new case of calculating A square B cube C4? And we have to find out the maximum value. Now, the first thing is clear that we are seeing this term maximum value and a product. Then we have to apply AMGM in most of the cases. So that is the first trigger we are getting from this question. Now, how to generate these kind of powers? Because we have just A, B and C over here. If I do the AMGM inequality, I'll be getting ABC, right? but how to generate these powers. So what I'll be doing, I'll be dividing this A into A by two and A by two, B into B by three, B by three and B by three and C into C by four, C by four, C by four and C by four and adding them. That would be 18. These numbers are still positive and we have, we can actually apply the AMG inequality in this one. But you must be thinking that why I chose to you know, divide by equally divide all these numbers according to the power. Why not something of like a by three and two a by three? Why not this one? Now let me demonstrate with this with an example. So let's say we have ABC and let's say we have uh, the, these are ABC and let's say a equals to 10 b equals to let's say five c equals to three. Now another case is a equals to eight now b equals to five and this is only three and c is equals to five. Now let's take one more case a equals to six b equals to six and c equals to six. Now let's try to find out the value of abc. In this case it would be 150. In this case it would be 200. In this case it would be 216. Now I can clearly see that when I'm dividing the numbers into equal parts. So the summation was 18. But now when, when I have done the equal partition in all these three numbers of this 18, then I'm getting the maximum product. Now that is why I chose to divide a by two and a by two and not a by three and two a by three, because that, that would make these two numbers not equal, unequal, right? And in that case, our product won't be maximum. And we have to find out the maximum value of this product. Now you can think it this way. We know that a plus b plus c by three is greater than equals to a b c raised power one by three. Now the equality exists only in case when a and b and c are all equal. That is on that is the only point when this equality exists. And we can clearly see that this product has the maximum value only when all these uh, numbers are actually equal. This product would be would be having the maximum value only when these numbers, these individual numbers would all be equal, right? So that is why you can think it this way only. So that is why I have taken a by two plus a by two plus b by three plus b by three plus b by three plus c by four plus c by four plus c by four plus c by four divided by we have got four plus three plus two. So that would be nine greater than equals to and you can then find out the value that would be a square divided by two square dot b cube divided by three cube dot c cube c raised power four divided by four raised power four raised power one by nine. Now on further solving, since this is 18, I'll be getting two. And if I cross multiply this denominator from here towards the left hand side, I'll be getting into two raised power two square dot three cube dot four raised power four raised power one by nine greater than equals to a square dot b cube dot c raised power four raised power one by nine. Now we have to uh, raise both sides with the power of nine because we want to find out the maximum value of this one, right? And since everything is positive, the inequality sign won't change. So this would make two raised power nine dot two square dot three cube dot four raised power four. And that eventually would become two raised power 19 because nine and two 11 and this is two raised power eight. So 11 plus 8, 19, 2 raised power 19 dot 3 cube. So this is our answer. So D would be the answer. Now let's revisit different summations which we studied earlier. 
so we know that sigma n equals to n times n plus one by two sigma n square equals to n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six and sigma n cube equals to n n plus one by two whole square now why are we studying this one now let's say we have to find certain a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 till an and we have to find out these summations s right let's call it as sn now what can we do if we find out the general term over here let's say general term is tn if we find out the tn and that is a function of n n square n cube and whatever so if this is a function of n basically so let's say it can be a n square plus b n now we can apply these formulas directly to find out the summation so our main purpose to study these summations is to apply in these kind of summation series where we have to find out the function of n function in terms of n for the general term and then we have to do the summation process right so let's look at some properties of summations so let's say if i get a function k dot n in that case we can take k outside and do the sigma n so that would become k times n n plus 1 by 2 right now in this case it's a summation of n plus n square so basically we can uh, do individually n n n square so that would be, that would give me n n plus 1 by 2 and over here it would give me n n plus 1 to n plus 1 by 6 right and now this is the mix of uh, this third property is the mix of first and second so over here what we can do we can do a times summation of fn plus minus b times summation of gn so that is how we can do the summations all we all we should be concerned is to find out the tn basically the function of n now let's look at this example find the sum of n terms of the series 1 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on so basically till tn now the important property about tn over here is let's say this is the third term and in case of third term the sum the term itself is having three terms so this is the second term the term is itself is having two term two number of terms right similarly in case of nth term so let's say nth term would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 till n right this would be the nth term and in case of nth term also we have n number of terms in the nth term right so if i try to write the general tn for this nth term that would be sigma sigma n right so the tn equals to sigma n that is n n plus 1 by 2 now this is tn we have to find out the sigma tn this tn was just one single term and we have to find out sigma tn so that would be sigma times n square by 2 plus n by 2 now we can take 1 by 2 is common that would give me sigma n square plus sigma n with the help of properties we can you know divide the uh, sigma and now this would give me 1 by 2 times sigma n square would be n n plus 1 2n plus 1 by 6 plus sigma n would be n n plus 1 by 2. Now you can take 1 by 1 by 2 times n n plus 1 as common, and that would give me 2n plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 2. Right. So this is our final answer. You can do the calculations afterwards, but this is how you have to solve it. You have to find out the tn first, and then you have to find out the sigma tn. now let's see the last topic of progressions that is method of difference so the this has two cases if difference of consecutive terms is in ap and if difference of consecutive terms is in gp now sometimes what will happen is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 is there and you cannot really find any kind of pattern based on which you can find the tn but the pattern what you can see is the difference between individual terms is in ap so basically difference between these two terms is a1 let's say this is a2 and let's say this is a3 and let's say this is a4 this is a5 and all these differences are in ap and sometimes it might be possible that even these are not in ap but the difference of these differences are in ap let's say this is b1 and this is b2 this is b3 this is b4 these differences are in ap so in the first case this one is not in uh, the, we found out the difference these are not in ap in second case these differences are in ap now how to so, how to find the tn over here and how to solve these equations to find out the summations of a1 plus a2 plus a3 ultimately so we call these as levels let's 
let's denote them with lambda this is lambda equals to 1 this is lambda equals to 2 so there is there are two methods to solve these examples and this can also happen if the difference of consecutive terms is in jp so we talked about ap first and the second case it would be we uh, found out difference and these are in gp and in some cases the difference of the differences are in gp right so these are the two cases which you have to understand and in both the cases in the first step we'll call it as lambda equals to 1 and in the second step in the second step we'll call it as lambda equals to 2 and and so on so forth so basically if we have to find out further differences to find out the ap ultimately or gp ultimately in that case lambda would increase so if we are getting ap in the first difference itself lambda equals to 1 if we are getting ap after two differences ap or gp after two differences then lambda would be 2 right so this part is clear now let's see how to find out the tn now let's talk about the case 1 that is for ap and lambda is known we know the lambda and let's say this is the value of lambda only right now to find out the tn that would be a function of degree lambda plus 1 so let's say lambda equals to 1 only in the first difference itself we got the ap so in that case the degree of the function tn function would be 2 so basically tn would be a n square plus b n plus c let's say lambda equals to 2 in that case tn would be a n cube plus b n square plus c n plus d this would be tn right this was for case 1 now for case 2 for case 2 in case of gp let's say lambda is the uh, it's a step where we are finding the gp in that case tn function would be some constant a multiplied by common ratio of the gp raised power n minus 1 plus a function of degree lambda minus 1 so let's say we got lambda equals to 2 from here so in that case we'll be getting a r times n minus 1 n is the number of terms r is the common ratio of gp plus function of degree lambda minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 that is 1 only so basically we'll be getting some a n plus b function that would be our tn format okay so this was our first method to solve these kind of questions when difference of consecutive terms are in ap or when difference of consecutive terms are in gp now let's look at one example and i'll tell you the other method as well while solving the example so this is find the sum of n terms 3 plus 7 plus 13 plus 21 plus 31 and so on till n terms right now s equals to 3 plus 7 plus 13 plus 21 plus 31 and so on now the difference over here is 4 difference over here is 6 difference over here is 8 Difference over here is ten and so on. So we can clearly see that this uh, this this has become an AP. So basically, lambda equals to one over here because in the first step itself, in the first difference step, we have got the AP. So lambda equals to one. So our TN function would be a n square plus b n plus c. Why? Because lambda the degree of the function TN function would be lambda plus one in case of AP. This is an AP, and we have lambda equals to one. So lambda plus one would be two. so second degree function would be there in terms of n now we'll have to solve three equations from here so if i if i find t1 i'll be getting a plus b plus c equals to 3 because t1 is actually 3 if i find t2 i'll be getting uh, 4a plus 2b plus c equals to 7 and if i find t3 i'll be getting 9a plus 3b plus c equals to 13 now you have to find out the values of abc by solving these three equations and three variables right and you when you find out the value of abc you will get a tn function and then you have to do the sigma tn so this is how you have to do it now let me tell you one more method to solve this one and i'll tell you when to use that so i'll write it in a little more proper way that would be 3 plus 7 plus 13 plus 21 plus 31 till tn right 
I'll write again s, but with one term shifted to the right. So I'll write three over here, plus seven, plus thirteen, plus twenty-one, plus t n minus one, plus t n. Now I'll subtract both of them. So this would become zero, and this would become negative. So negative that would come on the left hand side. That is t n equals to three plus. This would become four. This would become uh, six. This would become eight. This would become ten, and Let's say t dash n of this particular series, but it would be n minus one because the series is starting from here. From here it was n terms, so from here it would be n minus one terms only, right? So that would be t dash n minus one. T dash is the this particular series, not the earlier series. Now t n would be three plus. Now we have to find out the summation of these n minus one terms, and this is an AP, so that would give me n minus one by two times two. A plus n minus one minus one that would be n minus two into d. D would be over here two, right? So I'll be getting three plus n minus one by two times this is eight plus two n minus four. So that would become two n plus four. So this two and this becomes n plus two. So that would give me three plus n minus one times n plus two. So this is our T n, and you have to find out the sigma T n. So you have to use this particular method when you get lambda equals to one. In case of lambda equals to one, you don't really have to find out three variable, three variables and three equations, and then solve for A B C and find out the T n, then do the summation. Uh, you just do this kind of subtraction and use the summation formula in case of lambda equals to one only, and then you can find the T n much more easily as compared to that one. You'll have in that case you'll have to solve three equations, three variables. That would take a little more time as compared to this one. But this is valid for only lambda equals to one. In case of lambda equals to two, you can still do that, but that would become very very complicated. So in that case, that uh, T n function making would be more preferable as compared to this one. Now let's look at this example. This difference is three. This difference is six. This difference is twelve. This difference is twenty-four. So basically, this is the case of G P. And I'll leave this for homework. And you have to use both the methods to solve this particular question. So in the first case, you have to find out the T n. That would be a times r is per n minus one plus function of lambda minus one n degree, right? And the other method would be s, writing s two times and then subtracting them by writing the second series uh, one one step in the right side and then subtracting them, right? So you have to use both the methods to solve this particular question and see what's what's suitable for you. So today's lecture was till here only, and this is the end of progressions. And from tomorrow onwards, we'll be starting with binomial. And uh, let's meet tomorrow. Thanks for watching.